Bum, bum, bum. Be the 10th caller, and you will win a spot uh, to have breakfast with the roast. Breakfast provided by Jack's Restaurant. Again, George Kittle, 815 on the River Islands guest line. 815 for George Kittle. He'll join the morning roast at 815. We'll get into a lot with George Kittle here. So, Bosa, Floyd, his defensive line is going to have a lot of pressure on him because I think the back end is going to be very good. But what is it that Bosa needs to work on here? What? what is it that we want to see from Nick Bosa? I want to see 15 sacks. I want to see more sacks fumbles, Shasky. I want to see more TFLs, tackles for loss. Well, let's get specific. There was a few times where I didn't think that he set the edge in the run game, where he's come flying up, 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 upfield. I don't know what his responsibility is on any given play. Like, that's yeah. one thing that I freely sure. acknowledge. It just felt like they didn't set contain as a team all last year. And then simultaneously, it felt like his moves were very redundant. It was all power, all power. and there wasn't a sp- move he did try it late in the season um I, I just like to see some more stunts like and I know that was also on the defensive coordinator to call certain some of those things it, it just felt very redundant compared to the other pass rushers that I see out there who've got a variety of moves yeah well uh he's excellent against the run so you got to do that first I mean he is excellent against the run and he does play the game really hard I do think he does too much speed to power but he's a powerful guy. And so if you could keep collapsing the pocket, um, if he got a little bit more help from Eric or from the other side last year, he, he could, you could, in theory, like kind of push some guys to his way where he'd get more numbers. But I do think the spin, I think, you, I think you're going to see some spin this year. I think you're going to see him standing up. Um, I think you, you might even see him ghost a little bit because he does have great bounds to dip underneath some guys. So I think you're just going to see a change just watching him train this offseason. Like, he can't be in any better shape. Yeah. He can't train any harder than what he does. Him and his brother every day with their own trainer. Um, literally, that like he they live with him. <laughs> and so, um, you know, he, uh, everything from the nutrition to the whole thing. Like, I think he's physically and mentally ready. For the season, like all these pass rushers are very different. It's like being a you know a, a score in, in in basketball, or there's different. Sometimes they're gap hitters. Some guys are power hitters. I look at these these defensive ends, and like I think of someone more outside linebacker, but Vaughn Miller, he's a bendy guy. At least mm-hmm. he was in his prime, where mm-hmm. he'd bend around that mm-hmm. corner and get real low. That's not necessarily going to be Bosa's strength. No, I mean just look the way he's built. Yes, they're just built different. You know, I mean he's built like a, you know, just a brick house. You know, I mean he's just very very. Um, no, he's he's tighter than like say Max Crosby is. Right. So, but but it's okay. Like there's they're all built differently. I I played with Reggie White. He's the best of all time. Like and Bruce Smith was just different. Wow. Like these guys are just different. You know, they're built different, and so they they rush differently. You play with Reggie White. I, I he's one of my all time favorite football players. <laughs> well, no, I just sorry, yeah, best just growing ever? up. Just I mean going to Green Bay, and I didn't know watching this thirty for thirty that the Niners were in play for Reggie Jack. Was Reggie he? White? I mean he was everybody was wanting to die. He was going him. wherever yeah. God was telling yeah, him. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> God told him to go to Wisconsin, right? Yeah. I mean Atlanta, uh, Chicago. I mean Reggie White, the minister of defense, man, he was awesome. That old defensive line, but Baldy, who's a guy? Because <laughs> we've been having some fun this week. What's a take that you wish you could take back? A take. Maybe it's a, 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 a bad evaluation. Maybe it's like you missed on something. What's a bad take that you've had? Because we've all had them before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, somebody just hit me up on one the other day. And, it, you know, like I said, uh, oh, gosh, who was it? It was about Tom Sula. I saw your, your oh, response. Oh, it was Tom Sula. It somebody was Tom Sula. said, oh, well, this guy, because yeah. you put out a whole video. Yeah. I was looking at your response. Yeah, yeah, was no, brilliant. Told, the the guy kind of cussed you because you supported Tom Sula. Yeah. Well, I was a big fan of Jimmy Tom yeah. Sula, okay? So I met Jim when he was coaching the London Monarchs, yep. okay, defensive line, and I was over there doing NFL Europe games. Mm-hmm. And I was asking everybody, like, where can I go watch some film to, like, see? I didn't know who any of these guys were. Right. You know, so they said, oh, well, they, and they practiced this place called Crystal Palace. So it was like south part of London. You had to take a train to get there. It wasn't easy to get there. So I, I go down to this facility where the London Monarchs are training, and they're like, okay, that's, you know, the film room is there. So there's this dark, dank room. And, and I, I hear this. <laughs> like I hear somebody <laughs> spitting into a spittoon. It's Tom Sula. He's got, right? a, big he's got dip. a dip. In, yeah. right? He's got a dip and he's <laughs> spitting. So I introduced myself to him and we became best friends. All right. So like I saw this guy and he was a great defensive line coach. Mm. You know, he really was. And so he came to the league and he coaches defensive lines in the league and he was really good. You know, I mean, obviously, you know, with Harbaugh, mm-hmm. like they had Justin, you know, Smith and the whole group, Alden Smith, like he, like he was that coach. And so 
um, we, we always stayed friends. And anyways, uh, when he got elevated after, I guess, Chip left, right? Got fired. So he, he got the job. And it was just a, it was just the organization was just messed right. up. And so I just, when he first got the job, I thought this is going to be a guy that can actually communicate to everybody on the team. Like he just has that ability to talk to everybody, motivate everybody. No, look, it was a disaster. But I don't know that the organization around him was very good no, either at that time. It wasn't. So when we talk about bad takes, bad takes. And I love that league, by the way. The Rain Fire was my favorite team just because of the logo. Yeah. Watch that league all the time in the field of Europe. Andrew Luck's dad. Yeah. Shasky and I has a bad take, and I want you to listen to this. Okay, okay. I want you to laugh a little. Oh, boy. Oh, my goodness, Monte. Ooh, Where you well, want to begin? I, I mean, we got to begin with the quarterback position, and Debbie. Debbie! Debbie over here. Debbie! Debbie she knows Big 957 The Game You're listener. You're going to know what time it is. Subscribe to YouTube. Subscribe to Twitch. Click it. 957 The Game. Mm -hmm. Joe Shasky the Butcher. Vontae Hill. And what we just saw at the quarterback position. <laughs> oh, my God. Let me just say this, Shasky. I'll start it off like this. I will be shocked. If Trey Lance is a starting guy quarterback in week number one. I'm, I'm going to be real with you. I've seen a lot of quarterbacks play for the 49ers. Undeniable talent. But it's not just the physical tools. No. It's the little subtleties of how he played the position. Yeah. The dropbacks, the ability to move in the pocket mm -hmm. when there was a little pressure on the left or right side. And then he throws the ball on time, on the money, in the belly button, letting his receiver turn up field and make plays. Let me ask you about the presence. Oh, my the God. Presence, Come on. When he steps in the huddle, Bro. there's a different swagger to this offense. And I know it's just shirts and skin. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's wearing shorts, there's yeah. no pads yeah, right now. Great. And it's only, what, day three, day four. But the zip out of his hands, the way he can run and eat up yards and gobble up yards, it just looks different. And poor Jimmy Garoppolo. Like, I'm not going to say poor because he's got a lot of money. He's got a lot of cake. Bro. He's got the Jays. But with Jimmy Shasky, he's throwing balls behind guys. It, it was it's bad. Wobbly. It was bad today for Jimmy. He threw a pick six to Fred Warner. He threw another deep shot. Didn't where he just look tentative? He just looks shook. And he's <laughs> holding the ball forever. He doesn't have the ability. Look, how about the yardage that's hidden for Trey Lance oh. to just run? Run. He the RPOs and the effectiveness of the RPOs. When he gets on the edge, oh. he can stop on a dime yeah. and throw it. The ball's outside. Even when he throws it outside the numbers, he gives his yes. wide receivers yes. a chance to turn I, I think and run. Gets, so the, the, the big takeaway is <laughs> Trey Lance <laughs> is ridiculous. Phenomenal. Yeah, he's ridiculous. Also, I, for a guy coming out of Division oh, two, so he bad. looks like he's played in the league for five years. So I'm not even kidding. He looks so great. Bad. Also, wow. Um, the defense line. So we, got, we got Nate Loaded. Seconds. Part of the team. today, yeah. and they look good. Arden Key flash as well. Oh, my God. Subscribe on YouTube. Hit up the 957. Oh, it's so bad. So, is there any superlative you didn't put in that? <laughs> Did anyone <laughs> get left out? <laughs> no, I yeah, did not the guy left out. The garbage can emoji because of how bad that aged. <laughs> oh, man. Well, <laughs> I, I, I Honestly, like, I just never understood the fascination. Because, you know, like, obviously, the... The pandemic was a pandemic. He played one game in that year, yep. and he was awful in that game. So then you go back to the year before, and, you know, like, I don't know, like, you're playing against um, Northern Iowa. <laughs> like, I, like, there's no players in that. I, I just didn't really understand the fascination and what they, what they, how they were projecting him. I just didn't get it, you know. And so, like, I'm not, look, but Mac Jones was in play. And right. All these different guys. So, you know, and then there was a split you know, between the guys that were there, you know, and so you just didn't know, like, all the stuff that was happening. Like, I thought Matt Jones was coming to San Francisco. I really did. I knew his people in Philadelphia, and I, I, I know Kyle liked him, but regardless, I mean, I don't know if either one would have been better than what they the found. The best part about that, we go to our car in a parking lot, and we see two kids with their mom. They have some Jimmy G jerseys on. <laughs> Shasta goes, you may want to go get a number five, right? <laughs> and so the mom's like, oh, that's funny. Oh, Trey Lance, okay, cool. Literally, as we're about to pull out, the mom and the two kids are walking back into the 49er team. So yeah. she goes, I got to get these Trey Lance jerseys for the kids. <laughs> so <laughs> poor mom yeah, yeah. had to spend an extra yeah. $100 yeah. at the team store. Yeah. <laughs> okay, there's the Trey Lance element, which – I still don't understand. They got so lucky with the Purdy thing. I mean, they they did. Like yeah. they they can admit that they. Yeah. Every you have to get lucky at times, yep. and, and when it comes to player development and whatnot, the Jimmy Garoppolo thing is the most interesting to me. I do believe at one point in time he was a really good player, mm -hmm. and something happened. I'm watching Russell West, uh, Wilson play for Pittsburgh right now, and. I know he always had a frenetic style and he'd bail on plays, and I, I understand all that. But he's a shell of what he used to be. I think so. <sighs> 
What happens to guys in those situations? I think, um, you know, first of all, the, the injuries do compound themselves. You are not the same body that you were. I remember when Jim, I remember seeing Jimmy as a rookie. Um, and I was up in New England. They were scrimmaging the Eagles. And I remember him, like, the release actually was kind of ironic because he went to the same school as Tony Romo. Mm -hmm. So his release reminded me of Tony Romo. And just a snap release, like how quickly that thing happened. And I thought, this guy's got a chance. Anyway, I think he was a second-round pick, and I think Romo was a free agent, undrafted or whatever. But I thought they had similar styles. And then, like, as time went on, like, man, when he had to get to that second read and the pocket was collapsing, you didn't know where the ball was going. Like, it just, it, the release didn't look good after a while, after the hits and the injuries. And I think Russell uh, has taken a lot of hits and a lot of injuries. And I, I think some of that sort of compounds itself. And then I think there's, I don't know, just something about Russell that just doesn't permeate to a whole team. You know, you talk to the guys up in Seattle that were there. Like, the defense was the best defense in the league for four straight years in a row. And they had uh, beast mode. And all of a sudden, you know, Maybe it wasn't all Russell and his magic. It's it, I'm kind of blown away that Shanahan's gotten crushed for each of the Super Bowls, with, and yet the Pete Carroll not handing the ball to Marshawn. I feel like m maybe I'm in the Niner bubble, and all I hear is the Kyle Shanahan stuff. Kyle Shanahan gets ripped more for the Atlanta loss as yeah. an offensive coordinator yeah. than Pete Carroll does for not handing the ball to Marshawn at the one. Well, well unless you're uh, a Seattle Seahawk and you're on that team. Like, those guys kill Pete. You know, the, the guys on the team kill yeah. him, you know, for not handing it off. I mean, but even, like, that whole scenario, like, and Belichick's— Not calling timeout. Like, the whole thing. Like, I'm brilliant. sitting there watching the game. I'm like, oh, what are you nuts? Like, this is Belichick. What is he doing? And he put that defense out there on the field, and, like, he'd prep for it. And it was un unbelievable how he foreshadowed that particular— seen in that situation. They practice that play all week yeah. long, and Malcolm Butler was getting beat all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Getting beat on the play every time it practiced. They had a special defense yep. just for that goal line offensive play. I mean, Marshawn Lynch, we had his agent on, Doug Henderson, yeah. on a couple weeks ago, and I think they're going to talk about it, or they did talk about it on their podcast, politicking. And he was like, oh, we're going to get into that. And best believe Marshawn was not happy about it. Oh, of course. Now, Marshawn has never publicly said anything about the play. <laughs> But you can just tell he's one of the best goal line backs I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. And for one yard, I mean, that's, I mean, you, you, you literally, if they win that Super Bowl, and they're back to back Super Bowls now, like they're the beginning of what Kansas City is right now. Then you're talking about a three peat after that. And their defense was for four straight years in a row. And it's the only team in history. They gave up the fewest points in the league. Wow. For the modern NFL, I mean, a lot of people talk about, I think the Bucs team would have fit the modern NFL by the way they, they were set up. The Ravens of 02, I don't know if they could do the modern NFL with where everyone spreads you out and you don't see a lot of fullbacks. Yeah, but I mean, they might have done it that year if Jamal Lewis didn't get hurt. Okay. He got hurt in training camp and they lost their, their bell cow. And so that, that was the beginning of the, the collapse of that gotcha. franchise. But, but, I look at the way that the the Legion of Boom was set up. Mm -hmm. That's almost a perfect defense in mm -hmm. the modern era because of those two big corners. I mean, mm -hmm. Brandon Browner was sweet. Yeah, so the what, safeties. You know, Cam. Yeah, and Cam you know, was Earl. a beast. Just, you like, know what though? Those quarters in Baltimore weren't no slots. This was it no, Patrick that, Tate. No, not Patrick. Chris Sim, McAllister was next year. Dwayne Starks. Yeah, yeah Dwayne Starks. McAllister was drafted the next year. He was he was on the championship team. Was he on the? Yeah, ground? he was on the yeah, Both team. those guys were the tenth pick in the draft. Yeah. Those two corners. Yep, like they were drafted high. Yep, Chris McGonagher out of Arizona. Who was the that went to the Texans? Sharper? Or was that the linebacker? Well, they had they had, Derek, they had Rob Woodson at one of the safeties. Forget mm -hmm. who the free safety was on that team. But they had Sharp. They had a, they had a squad, too. I think that defense would have aged well in today's game. The physicality with the defensive line, the defensive mm -hmm. front. They were six. Sam Adams and Sarah Goosa pushing the Sam pocket. Sam Adams was a monster of where he went. Sarah Goosa sitting on Rich Gannon. Please. Oh, here he is. It was a belly flop. You missed me with that. Hey, man, that's football. Man. That's football. Yeah. You got to tackle Sharp, dog. By the way, now's the time to qualify. Call this number right now. Caller number 10, 415-523-4652. 415-523-4652.